Prince Harry has got a new book out in which he talks about the challenges of being a royal person. But does this round of interviews reveal more about the relationship between powerful institutions and the deep state and media than they were intended to? <laughs> Hello there, you six million awakening wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage towards truth and freedom. Remember, turn on the notification bell right now and subscribe to this channel in case the algorithm tries to glide you in the general direction of yet more propaganda. Here we will do our best to present you with our version of the truth and together, via the comments and our ongoing chat, we will come to something together that amounts to a perspective that can be relied on. Even with a story like this about Prince Harry and Meghan, which could initially be seen as senseless distraction and online frou-frou and froth, but I feel like, in particular, it could be argued that this story is an anomaly, like Elon Musk acquiring Twitter that reveals information that would typically be kept from us. Let's have a look at some of the interview and see if we can make any diagnosis from it about the way that media and power operate more generally. What was different here was this level of frustration. And you know, I talk about the red mist that I had for so many years, and I saw this red mist in him. He wanted me to, to, to hit him back, but I chose not to. The royal family have always had marginal figures like Edward and Mrs. Simpson, and more latterly and perhaps more pertinently, Princess Diana. Figures that can be regarded as external to the dominant culture of the family. And in this case, I suppose, with the media having involved in the way that it is, Prince Harry can operate as a kind of whistleblower, or at least an alternative perspective on the machinations and movements of that family. After the Oprah interview, they said that they were going to bring in a diversity saw. That hasn't happened. Everything that they said was going to happen hasn't happened. I suppose what this conversation shows you is that the royal family is an anachronistic and atavistic organisation. There is no rational reason to have a royal family. And beyond that, there is no reason to have such a deeply hierarchical and elitist society. In a way, it's peculiar to have a essentially former royal commenting on the hierarchical structures of the royal family and the obvious biases that are within it. The royal family has to be a propaganda machine to justify its ongoing existence. Because if we were to look for a moment in macro at the problems of our planet, we would quickly deduce that having entrenched elitist structures is not necessary and not helpful for the ongoing survival of the planet and for the benefit of most ordinary people. So the royal family requires continual propping up, continual positive PR. The royal family have to be presented as enough like us for us to enjoy them and feel generally positive towards them, but distinct enough from us to warrant the elite treatment that they receive. Fact is, is that it provides a template for separating society into different categories. Even if you don't live in a monarchy, if you live in the United States, you accept that there are elite groups, that you have essentially an oligarch class of tycoons who are talking about space exploration while other people are talking about being able to eat or heat their homes. So having a conversation about the particularities of royalty is extraordinary. A few interesting things that are revealed by this press to, have, to promote this book are that there are intimate relationships between the royal family and the media, that classified information that's controlled exists here, that it's even possible to consider some of the more outlandish conspiracies that exist around the royal family because they have close relationships with the media and secret services. To protect an organisation like the royal family, you need ongoing propaganda, you need deep state relationships and strong media relationships. The monarchy is a PR exercise. Even a figure like Diana, who was anti-establishment still operated ultimately within those spheres and fell out of favour because to a degree she was antithetical to the aims of the royal family. I suppose the challenge that Meghan and Harry have is that they want to start their own empire or industry or business, that they want to be able to exist outside of the royal family and the only collateral they have is the data that they possess on the royal family, that they can, like Diana, present a counter-narrative. But if you start to deconstruct royalty in an absolute way, Way, what you're left with is you shouldn't have royal families, you shouldn't have elitism of this degree. But ultimately, all of these interests are antithetical to the interests and well-being of ordinary people. So while in the short term it could be beneficial 
for Harry and Meghan to present a counter narrative to the royal family. Ultimately, it's something that will unravel because if you scrutinize them through the same lens that you scrutinize the royal family, you have to ultimately deduce that these are unnecessary organizations. They're anachronistic residual leftovers from a time when we needed continual reminding that there was some benefit to having centralized sovereignty, that there was some advantage for ordinary people in being governed by out of touch leaders. And while you can say the power of the royal family is ultimately or largely ceremonial, the Guardian revealed in 2021 that a thousand laws were vetted by the Queen or Prince Charles, that you know some of their power is legislative as well as symbolic. When you consider that still in 2022, there are aspects of the JFK case that are still being booted into the future. There are still vetoed documents, redacted information around something that happened in the late 1960s. Presumably, what's contained in those JFK files is information that goes beyond Lee Harvey Oswald was a lone nutter acting on his own intuition and instincts. Presumably there's information that shows a degree of conspiracy and collaboration. Well, if that kind of information can be controlled, it's very interesting to consider what other type of information may be constrained, restricted and redacted. It's possible to imagine that while Harry gives us some sort of personal insights into the dynamics of the royal family, that there may similarly be information about the real power and the real reach and the real influence of, let's face it, an incredibly wealthy organisation that simply doesn't need to exist. It is possible, for example, to imagine those resources going elsewhere. In a way, it's comparable to the Twitter files, where Elon Musk's unique position at this moment means that he's willing to reveal that within that social media organisation there is deep state collaboration, that the FBI over a two-year period paid three and a half million dollars in order to exert influence over the type of information that was published and the type of information that was restricted on an apparently neutral and private platform. Harry's revelations, I would say, are a brief anomaly that may ultimately be about kind of gossip and social and cultural issues that ultimately do not affect power. But from it, I think you can infer that there are relationships between powerful institutions, the media and the state that control the flow of information and the control of data. Perhaps all the fibrility, all the heat that surrounds a subject like this is because on some level, we know that if we knew the absolute truth about the royal family, if we knew the absolute truth about the government, if we knew the absolute truth about the degree of collaboration between social media media, ordinary media, the corporate globalist state and powerful elite organisations like the royal family or other powerful families in America, the Bushes, the Clintons, etc. But we would be highly resistant to allowing those kind of undemocratic processes to continue indefinitely. When one of their number breaks ranks, whether it's Elon Musk or Donald Trump or Prince Harry, you get a kind of a shiver, a shudder of awareness that, hold on, all is not well within these institutions. All is not well within in our societies. Something is indeed rotten in Denmark. There are alternative ways to organise society and people that tell you that there aren't are vested in keeping things broadly the same. Are many of these revelations little more than gossip? I would say so. Are many of them heartbreaking revelations about a boy that lost his mum? Of course they are. Are some things deeply private personal revelations about the nature of addiction, drug use, grief and trauma? Of course they are. All those things are interesting in a somewhat personal, human and uh, maybe slightly frivolous way. But for me, what is interesting about these kind of conversations that I would rank alongside the ongoing censorship of JFK information and the revelations in the Twitter files is, as we have long suspected, there are relationships between powerful institutions that allow them to control the narrative of the way that most of us perceive reality. This kind of openness from a royal would have felt shocking a few years ago. We've heard so much, it's now less surprising. Despite it all, Harry keeps talking of record reconciliation as his family, at least publicly, remains silent. On some level, I feel then that it's quite a sad story about a person revealing the degree of suffering they went through when they lost their mother and feeling like an outsider in a family. I'm sure many of us can relate to that. But perhaps more importantly, and to me more interestingly, it reveals a degree of collaboration and relationship between the deep state, powerful institutions such as the royals and the media, particularly when taken in conjunction with the ongoing censorship of the JFK 
K case, the revelations of the Twitter files that demonstrates that the reality that you live in and that I live in is a highly curated one and one that is presented to us in order to continue to advance the interests of the powerful and to mask great tracts of reality lest we should make very different decisions about how we'd like it organised. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these. Remember, turn on the notification bell and subscribe and most importantly of all, stay free.